Marvin Bagley III will probably best be remembered as the guy taking one pick before Luka Doncic, so most casual fans will view him as a bust. But people forget just how dominant Bagley was coming out of Duke, and despite some early career struggles with the Kings, I think Marvin finally found a home to develop his game in Detroit. After finishing his junior season at Sierra Canyon as the number one recruit in the class of 2018, Marvin and his family decided that he was ready to make the jump to college basketball. So he reclassified to the class of 2017, still became the number one ranked recruit in that class, and then made this announcement on ESPN. I would like to thank Danny Ferry and Coach K for allowing me to wear his retired number 35 at Duke University. At Duke, Bagley took the college basketball world by storm, putting up about 21 points and 11 boards on elite efficiencies in his lone season with the Blue Devils. This success made him the second overall pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, and the Kings were thrilled to get a big as skilled as Bagley to pair with their young guard De'Aaron Fox who they drafted the year prior. Bagley did deal with some periodic injuries over the course of his rookie season with the Kings, but the rookie big man still appeared in 62 games and made the all-rookie first team in 2019. He averaged about 15 points and 7.5 boards on solid efficiencies, and the best part was he did all of this despite coming off the bench for all but four games during his rookie year. And in those four games he did start, the dude looked like a superstar in the making, putting up 20 points, 11.5 boards, and 1.5 blocks on 47% shooting from the field. Overall, it was an exciting season to be a Kings fan, and the future looked extremely bright, especially considering they finished as a ninth seed that year. But the Kings completely regressed the next season, and this can partially be contributed to the fact that Marvin Bagley only appeared in 13 games during his sophomore season due to constant foot issues. Luckily for Bagley, he got some time to rehab when the NBA shut down for five months due to COVID-19, so when the NBA did return in late July of 2020, the Kings looked forward to the opportunity to compete for a playoff spot fully healthy, but they didn't get that opportunity because their young big man in Bagley suffered a foot sprain in a team scrimmage before the games even started. Worst part is, going into the bubble, Bagley felt he had fully recovered from his foot injuries earlier in the year, saying that he felt 100% percent and ready to go. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And things weren't much better during Bagley's third season, as a calf injury and broken hand held him out for half the season, causing him to only be available for 43 games in the 2020-21 year. And despite him finally getting the full-time starting job, Bagley's numbers didn't really change too much from his rookie year. Marvin's dad didn't really help his case either when he took to Twitter not even two weeks after the season started and tweeted, At Sacramento Kings, please trade Marvin Bagley III ASAP. Love, Coach Bagley. I don't know if Marvin's dad was requesting a trade for him or what was going on, but this was the start of a toxic relationship between Bagley and the Kings organization. When then Kings head coach Luke Walton was asked about the tweet, he replied with this. Like I always say, good, good or bad, whatever people are saying, you know, you know we gotta do everything we can not to let that affect what we're trying to get done here. However, it did affect what they were trying to get done. Sacramento tried to move him at the 2021 trade deadline but passed on all potential deals due to the fact they didn't feel they were receiving fair value for Bagley. So when the 2021-22 season started and the Kings notified Marvin he wasn't in the opening night rotation, his agent Jeff Schwartz blasted the Kings organization, saying Sacramento has informed Marvin Bagley he is not in the opening night rotation, which is completely baffling. It's clear they have no plans for him in the future and yet they passed on potential deals at last year's trade deadline and this summer based on value instead they chose to bring him back but not play him a move completely contradictory to their value argument this is a case study in mismanagement by the king's organization when luke walton was asked about the schwartz rant he declined to answer and probably felt schwartz's pressure as bagley appeared just two nights later against the utah jazz but it was clear bagley and the king were done with each other as he was receiving the least minutes of his career and his counting stats had completely dropped off. 
but on February 10th, Bagley and his camp finally got their wish as he was moved to the Detroit Pistons in a four-team deal. And Detroit was excited to get a player like Bagley while only having to mortgage Josh Jackson, Trey Lyles, and a couple of second rounders. Marvin reacted to the trade by saying, I felt like a huge weight was taken off my back. I felt like I could have fun playing basketball again. Being in a new environment, new facility, new teammates, new faces. I think that's what I needed to finally get that. I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. Translation, Sacramento expected him to be their next big superstar, and things didn't work out like that, so the organization flipped out and put immense pressure on Bagley to be great. But Detroit wasn't expecting that at all. They just wanted Marvin to play his game within the flow of the team and things worked out great. Bagley began to elevate his numbers, and he was a great fit for a Pistons squad that lacked interior scoring. The Pistons ranked 24th in points in the paint before the Bagley trade, but climbed all the way up to 17th after it. Not to mention, the pick and roll combo of Cade and Marvin Bagley was elite. Cade ranked top 30 in pick and roll scoring during the 2021-22 season at 6.4 points per game. And things got even better when he had an offensive savvy big to distribute the rock to. As despite Marvin Bagley's low average of 1.8 points per game in the pick and roll this past year, he was extremely effective as he had a 66.7 score frequency in the pick and roll, which put him in the 86th percentile of roll men, which in other words is elite. All of this newfound success with Detroit landed him a 3 year $37 million contract extension with the team. However, he still has some flaws he needs to correct in order to help take the Pistons to the next level. The first and most important issue being defense. Since coming into the league, he hasn't been a great defender, as he's pretty slow-footed and gets torched in the pick and roll defensively. His other issue is passing, as he's never averaged more than one assist per game. And I'm not saying he needs to average 10, but he could be more aware of his teammates offensively. There's times where he has it and just doesn't look for teammates because he doesn't think about it. But in the end, I look forward to the continued development of Marvin Bagley III, and the Pistons should be pretty fun to watch next season with all their young talent. Remember, Bagley's only 23 years old and still has tons of room to grow, so I guess we'll have to see. But I hope you enjoyed. And with all that being said, peace.